Hi, Bill Barber from Polygon here. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to take a material from Polygon.com, bring it into 3ds Max using our material converter, and finally render it out using Redshift. Before we start though, let's look, take a look at the material that we're going to be using. This wooden flooring one. Um, I've already downloaded the 4K version and they're saved to my hard drive. Another file we're going to need is this one, the uh, Polygon Material Converter for 3ds Max. Um, I've also downloaded that and saved it. So next we'll jump over to Max and take a look at how to install this. Now it's actually very, very simple. Um, if you open up the zip folder that you download from our website, there's a couple of files inside, one of which being the uh, the plugin itself. Literally just take that and drag it anywhere on the viewport. You'll then be prompted with this little message that just lets you know that the converter's been installed. We can hit OK on that. Now all we need to do is add in the button. I've already got one because I've installed this previously um, and place it next to my material editor there. But to follow along and do it yourself, you go to Customize, Customize User Interface, give it a second to pop up, then go to Toolbars, go to Category, scroll down and find Polygon. Uh, it should be there somewhere, there we go. Then it will uh, list the button for the material converter and you can just place that wherever you like. Okay, so with that done, let's click on the Material Converter and take a look at how to use it. The first option here is the Textures folder. This is where you tell the converter where you've saved all your your textures to. Okay, so if I click on that and then go Polygon uh, and then Materials, which is where I've kept them, and you can see all the different materials that I've downloaded. Uh, I literally just take the files within the zip folder that you download and dump them straight in there. Okay, so with that folder selected, next up is the, oh, I'll just mention this actually, the warning you're getting here. I have a few uh, overlays downloaded that aren't full materials, uh, and this is just the plugin letting me know that it won't be bringing these in because it knows that they're not actual materials. Anyway, so you can just hit dismiss. Under renderer, it will do its best to automatically select the renderer that you've got assigned to your project. So I've already set this scene up for Redshift, so that's what we have here. But the uh, the other options are in the drop-down there. But we'll leave it on Redshift. Underneath that you have some advanced options. Uh, the only one we're going to click today is use 16-bit maps. Uh, most of our materials, or at least a lot of them, come with 16-bit uh, versions of the normal and displacement maps. And you should always use those if your software can take it, which obviously 3ds Max can. So let's hit Convert and it will bring in a, a total of 12 materials. And once it's finished, you'll get a little success pop-up telling you that the materials have been loaded. So at this point, we can hit OK, close the material converter, and then um, we'll, we'll just take a quick look at our test scene here, just so we know what we're looking at. It's very, very simple. It's just a floor plane and a camera, basically, and some HDR lighting. So let's open up the material editor, and what I'm also going to do is turn on the rendered view Now with this loaded, I'm going to uh, lower the scale down to 50%, just so we can have it as like a little preview window at the side here. Uh, and I'm also gonna hit this play button so it will update this uh, as we make changes to it. So, under this temporary library that you see here on the left in the material editor, we have all the materials that it's just brought in. Now the one we're looking at today is wood flooring 44. So I'm gonna drag that into the uh, node view here and you can see the material converter has brought in a uh, standard redshift shader along with all the maps for the material um, and it's actually got them all it's the color reflection gloss normal and displacement which is all the ones we need so that's great what we need to do now though is assign this material to the floor plane so if you click on the floor plane and then right mouse button on the material itself and then just select assign material to selection uh, yeah, okay, and then straight away you'll be able to see the uh, material in the the render view there. So yeah, that's, I mean that's, that's literally it. Uh, a, a couple of clicks and you've got a material perfectly imported looking good. Uh, the only thing I'm going to show you to do here, the the, the way the gloss map is being uh, translated here, it, looks, it just looks a little on the uh, on the rough side, the reflections could be a little smoother um, compared to the, the reference render that's on the Polygon website for this material. So let's double click on the gloss map. 
No, we don't have anything there, do we? Sorry, I'm thinking of a different renderer. <laughs> um, so right mouse button, go to Maps, and then General, and then RGB Multiply. Multiply? Multiply. Anyway, <laughs> uh, just feed the gloss map into the uh, Multiply node, and then place that into Reflection Roughness. And then if we load up this Multiply node, you can see there's a map for the for, for color one. That's our flooring, our gloss map that's coming in. And there's no map associated with color two. So for color two, we can set a value manually. So if we lower that value, it will decrease the effect that the, the uh, gloss map is having on the material. If I turn it all the way off, it's just like this perfectly like mirrored uh, surface, which isn't isn't quite the effect we're after, but somewhere in the middle should give us a nice looking result maybe a little bit lower than that yes yeah okay so with that in place let's close down the uh, material editor and I'll just open this up again a little so we can set that back to a hundred percent and let's run a last pass on the render now I've got the settings set relatively low here, so you're still getting a little bit of noise in the reflections. Uh, but yeah, that's a that's a good looking result. So in summary, we've learned how to download a material from polygon.com, bring it into 3ds Max using our material converter, uh, make it a minor adjustment to the uh, gloss map in the material editor, and then finally render it out in Redshift.